What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We're back on the WR250R here and today we have some minor electrical work to do. Well, the impact actually is not so minor. Um, right now we are definitely not traveling 50 miles an hour. Uh, as many of you guys know, I upgraded my rear sprocket on the bike to a 49 tooth. For those of you who aren't familiar with the WR250R here, the stock gearing on this bike is a 13 tooth sprocket up front and a 43 tooth in the rear. So I left the 13 tooth alone up front just because there isn't a terrible amount of room in between that front sprocket and the case. Uh, I left that alone and I, I installed the 49 tooth rock sprock steel sprocket in the rear because I have been going off-road quite a bit more than I have been on-road so with that stock 43 tooth rear I was stalling out left and right in the woods I love this gearing for the woods um, it's decent for the road for around town definitely don't don't want to use a 49 tooth for the highway um, definitely gonna need a second set of wheels at some point but I'm liking this gearing right now. It's good for putting around town and really good in the sticks. So I'm gonna keep this for a while, but it's caused a huge issue with the speedometer and odometer here because as you guys know, the speedometer and odometer readings come from the transmission on this bike. So most dirt bikes, they don't come with the speedometer. Most supermoto owners will rig up a speedometer like the Vapor vapor speedometer which gets its reading from the front wheel here it's just it just has a cable that goes down the forks to the front wheel and that's how it gets its reading you don't have to mess with recalibrating the electronic speedometer which is housed inside the transmission on this bike so that's a slight downside um, but it's not the end of the world we're gonna be recalibrating it today with the speedo DRD from 12 o'clock labs Again, we're, we're definitely not going 70 miles an hour right now. I'm going more like, I don't know, 50. But we're gonna come up on a speed sign here so I can illustrate to you guys just how big a difference the, the gearing makes. According to 12 o'clock laps, there's already a 7.7% .7 error in the speedometer from the factory on the WR250R. So we're gonna be correcting both that and the impact of the gearing change. I definitely don't wanna keep running up my odometer for no reason and have like 5,000 miles on this bike when I only have like 3,000. So that along with wanting to know how fast I'm actually going so I don't break the speed limit all the time. Um, those are my two main reasons for installing this. It was only 70 bucks on Amazon, so I'm, I'm happy to spend that money, especially compared to like $110 for the Speedo Healer. So all in all, not bad. The programming looks pretty simple. I'll review all the instructions with you guys, of course. We're gonna pull off the seat in the left side panel, jump into the wiring, get this puppy recalibrated. There's our speed sign over there on the left. Alright, I'm gonna hold 50 miles an hour right now. Let's see what the speed sign says. 38, 40, 38, 40. So we're like 12 miles per hour over. So roughly 20% over, which <laughs> It's not good. I'm putting 20% more miles on my bike than I actually am right now. But I'll see you guys back at the house. We'll jump into the installation on the WR250R here. So you'll receive your Speedo calibrator in a little plastic bag like this, probably in a bubble mailer like I did from Amazon. And uh, it's really pretty simple. We have our unit with our two connectors, two zip ties, and a sweet decal. Take a look at it. Sweet. Okay. We have extremely detailed instructions. Don't know if you guys are focusing in there, but extremely detailed instructions on how all the programming takes place. They also have a really helpful video up on their website showing you how to do this. But I'm gonna show you as well, just for uh, 
just for the purposes of the video. So the Speedo DRD has many claims to fame. It is the smallest electronic speedometer and odometer calibrator in the world, which is pretty crazy. This little cube is tiny. You can tuck it away pretty much anywhere on your bike. It has the widest calibration range on the market. They claim that it's the easiest calibrator to set up. It works on vehicles displaying both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. And you can make up to a 0.1% adjustment to your odometer and speedometer, which is a very, very fine adjustment you're making. As you can see here, it is fully waterproofed. The control box has been coated in a waterproof coating and all of the connectors have nice rubber seals to make sure no water can get in. It's got an 18 inch length for those of you who need to know. It does have a three year replacement warranty and it is made right here in the USA. All right, so enough talking about it. Let's pull off our seat and side panel and get this installed. So you probably can get away with just removing your left side panel here um, to access the necessary wiring. To do so, of course, your H5 hex bit to remove that, but I'm gonna remove the seat just so we can get a better look at everything. So this is why I wanted to pull off the seat because there is something very important to note when installing your Speedo DRD on a WR250R because the brake light connector and the speedometer connector are the same exact style connector. You can differentiate them very easily because the brake light has a black, yellow, and brown wire and the Speedo connector has a blue, white, and black wire here. So. This is the connector we want to focus in on. Don't plug it into your brake light because it's obviously not going to work. So I'm just going to release this little wire loom organizer right here to give myself some more slack. And I'm going to disconnect the speedometer. A little bit of debris in there. I'm going to grab some compressed air, blow that out really quick. All right, so we'll now plug in our speedometer calibrator here. It's just a piggyback system. So we're going to plug the male connector into the stock female connector and we'll plug the female one into the male and this is just you know in the middle of that connection interrupting it and recalibrating it we're going to flip on the bike let me get let me get you guys zoomed in here so we've turned it on my fuel injectors just went over and you saw that we had a green light first and then a red light that means it's in the green impedance mode um, Almost all bikes out there are going to use the green mode. It's only a few like KTMs, I believe, that use the red mode. So look in the manual for that if you have, you know, a bizarre bike, but most bikes are going to use the green mode. Now 12 o'clock labs instructs us to reset the memory on this device just to make sure it's clear. So to do that, we're going to hold down the button for 10 blinks. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so now we have the flashing lights, green and red. I think I'm gonna turn off my camera light so you guys can see a little better here. We're now gonna hold down again. So we've got orange, green, red. If we let go on orange, then we're gonna reset all the memory. If we let go on red, it'll reset the max speed because the unit does record your maximum speed and then that can be displayed on your speedometer. And lastly, if we let go on green, it's gonna reset the programming. So we're gonna let go on green. There we go. So we've just reset the memory on the unit. So at this point, we're now ready to program our unit. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the product page and right down here, we have a setup calculator. I'm just gonna click on that. And we're gonna have our factory specs over on the left, or up on the top, I should say. I had a 43 tooth stock. Tire circumference is 80. And our new gearing is 1349. Same size tire. Oop. And factory error. So you can see right here the WR250X and R are about 7.7% off from the factory. So we're going to type in 7.7, calculate. 
and you can see down at the bottom our value negative 19.9 percent so yeah we were off by 20 percent so we're going to be inputting negative 19.9 now to enter programming mode we're going to hold it down for five blinks one two three four five we'll let go now it's ready to accept our programming so we're now going to hold the button again and it's gonna go green, red, green, red, until we let go. So if you wanna input a positive value, you're gonna let go on green. Now for us, we're doing a negative value, so we're gonna let go on red, just like that. Now it's flashing again, and we're gonna hold down for one blink, because we're doing 19.9, so I'm gonna do one blink, let go, nine blinks, let go, another nine blinks, let go. So here we go. One blink, I let go. That's the first number. Now I'm gonna do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the last value following the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And at the end there, we'll have an orange confirmation light verifying that we input a value. So if we want to double check that value, we can hold this down for two blinks. One, two, one blink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Awesome. So we have the correct value programmed in and at this point we can just tuck the unit away. I'm going to try to get this as neat as I can, tuck it in there, make sure it's in a secure spot and secure everything with those two zip ties and we'll hop back on the road and see if it worked. Alright so right off the bat here we're in sixth gear cruising along and we're sitting at 40, 42 miles an hour. So we're looking a lot, a lot more accurate now, uh, now that I've recalibrated and to be honest, I'm super, super glad that I re-geared the bike uh, right away. I think I waited a week or two before re-gearing it. Um, but I'm glad I did so because if I didn't, I never would have bought the Speedo uh, DRD and corrected the 7.7% .7 error that comes on these bikes from the factory. It's the same thing with a lot of cars, a lot of motorcycles. They all come, you know, sort of, kind of calibrated. Um, my Honda Grom clone was like, I don't know, 12, 15 miles per hour off from the factory. So definitely don't want that, but we're looking a lot more accurate here. Yeah, we're probably going 60 right now. 50, 45. to go see the speed sign see what's going on now i hope we're within like i don't know two miles an hour i'd be happy if we're within two miles per hour gear I was <laughs> sitting at like 80 87 miles an hour so I think we're probably pretty dead on let's go over to that speed sign and see what's going on all right folks here we go I'm gonna hold 40 miles per hour which is the speed limit right here so that's 40 and it says we're going 39. Sweet! Awesome! Let's go, baby! We fucking got it! Hell yeah! 
that's awesome and you know who knows if that speed sign is calibrated properly it's probably a mile an hour off i bet i'm more accurate than that speed sign but regardless i'm within one mile an hour of the speed trap so that's huge super stoked about that hey eric shout out mill and plumbing baby milliner eric my boys yeah i mean we're probably going 33 right now so kind of crazy to finally have an accurate speedometer super stoked about correcting this um, not only so I can tell how fast I'm actually going but so we don't rack up a ton of miles on this bike so overall super super easy installation the programming seemed a little complicated online at first but just watch this tutorial video once or twice and you'll get it just just fine so highly recommend installing one of these on your bike I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please go leave a like down below subscribe for more content Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time on JD Cars.